artists, colleagues, and friends. The music you just heard and will hear again as we close our program today is music that Dr. McBride's wife, a pianist, wanted us to play for this service. Though she cannot attend in person, she wants you to know that Dr. McBride McBride listened to this music in their house every day. She believes that the music of Chopin expresses and speaks how much she loves and appreciated him. She is also sending her deepest thanks to every attendee here today at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. It is the truth that in my work with Dr. McBride's patients, every single one of them sung his praises to me to a patient. Together we gather today to celebrate and in so doing lay down a tangible marker in our community hospital way of the life of an immensely caring and spirit-filled man whose legacy will continue on in the work and love he shared with all. Let's meditate together on the following words. Dearest and most gracious and encompassing source of all names and beyond all names, thank you for waking us up this day to live another day as a reflection of the best of who and what you are. Thank you for this program that will celebrate the work and caring spirit of Dr. Daniel McBride. We ask that you shine down your strength, patience, love, and glory at this time to build up our collective well-being and peace. May this be so. Good evening. My name is Lynette Watkins, and I have the pleasure and the honor of being president and CEO of Cooley Dickinson Healthcare. This is a moment of reflection and a moment of celebration as we remember our dear colleague, friend, Dr. Daniel McBride. Dr. McBride leaves behind his wife and his son as well as his Cooley Dickinson family. His longtime colleagues in the orthopedics and sports medicine department staff from the OR, the emergency department, joint replacement center, rehabilitation, and hundreds of patients who benefited from his clinical acumen as a dedicated surgeon. He was originally from upstate New York, and he joined us at Cooley in March of 1996. He earned his medical degree from SUNY Health Science Center, Syracuse, where he then completed his internship and orthopedic residency. He later completed sports medicine fellowships at the American Sports Medical Institute in Birmingham and at Sports Med SA in South Australia. He was a fellow of the American Academy of Orthopedics and a fellow of the American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine. But more than all of this, he was a dedicated colleague and a dedicated friend. He really embodied what is the best of us here at Cooley. He was committed to what we would call the ministry of presence. Always had a kind word, always was someone who checked in just to say, hey, how are you? How are things going? He was a, a listener an avid cyclist, someone who loved his family, his friends, and life, and he would want us to celebrate him. And so we have the pleasure of doing that. And we, the Cooley Dickinson Healthcare family, appreciate you being here in memory, in honor, and in celebration of him. Thank you.
Hi, I am Peter Christakos. I'm a pathologist here in the hospital and I uh, was pretty tight with Dan for the last 10 plus years. We knew each other mostly through biking and then that extended to other things. Um, and uh, there was, for those of you who don't know, there was a celebration of his life last Friday, which was a, a wonderful event and I got to meet uh, the people, the different parts of Dan's life, he had a lot of different circles of, of people. Um, and they didn't overlap necessarily, there was a little bit of overlap, but there are a lot of different circles. So I got to meet his mother, his two of his siblings, and his son um, were at that event. And also a lot of people that I'd heard a lot from Dan about over the years. Um, we tended to do long rides together. We probably rode twice a month in the season. And um, when you're on the bike for a long time, you talk a lot. And uh, it, Dan was good at talking. Um, uh, so I'll just tell a few silly anecdotes from that part of uh, our life together. I called him Danny. I may be the only one around that calls him Danny, but um, when you're spending a lot of time on a bike together, you talk a lot. And his favorite thing to talk about, hands down, was his son. Uh, when we started riding together was little Danny and he was telling me all about little Danny's triumphs and things that he was doing and that he wanted to do and his next accomplishment was Dan's always, always Dan's proudest moment and then uh, one day my office is right below the OR so I was kind of on his path in and out so he, he'd pop in every now and then and he pops into my office one day and he said hey Junior's taller than me I said alright now you're little Danny and uh, <laughs> Uh, so then I, I eventually dropped a little because he's the same height, we're the same height, so we're both little guys. So then he just became Danny and that's how he is, he's on, in my contact list as Danny. Probably a lot of you don't know, a lot of you, some of you people out there are bikers, but um, Danny had a diesel engine and by that I mean he took a long time to warm up. So when you're cycling, you know, you're always kind of out, trying to outdo each other. And I could do that in the beginning of a ride because he took a long time to, like I'm talking 30 miles to warm up. On some of our longer rides, he would be, um, you know, not feeling great, not feeling great. And then after 30 miles, he would be, you know, the Energizer Bunny. Um, it was a unique characteristic, but he had a well-known diesel engine to me. Another way I'll remember Dan is Smiling Dan. Um, you know, how we think of people, some people have a, when what does their face look like when they're not doing anything? Some people have a stern face, maybe a frowny face. Some people have a, you know, whatever. But we all know what Dan's face was when he wasn't doing anything. He was set in a smile. He's got a big grin, um, and that's always how I'll remember him. I've got a photograph of a bike trip we took in 2011 to Italy, and I've got a great picture of him smiling away. He's got an Argyle cycling jersey on it, and it's just, it's... That's the memory I have when I think of Dan. Another thing we talked a lot about um, over time was he always insisted to me that he was shy. I didn't buy it and I didn't see it ever. And I said, Hi, what do you mean? And he, he qualified it. He said, well, I'm shy among people I don't know. And it kind of dawned on me when I was thinking about things to say, uh, what, what was going on here. Cause the pre in this area, anyway, he knows everybody. He's got some connection to many, many people because he was a great guy, enthusiastic, friendly. He was a doctor to many, a, pay, a, a friend to a lot. And he just knew everybody. Um, so he was never shy around here in my, you know, what I saw. We would go to many uh, events, a bike ride or a charity event or something. And I would go with him and then leave without him because he would stop talking to somebody. Um, he was always talking. And um, we also know Dan, he lived life fully. He didn't hold back. He traveled a lot with his son and his best friend, were one and the same. They traveled all over the place together. They went to Iceland, they biked out west, they hiked out west, they rafted in the Midwest, they went biking in Vermont, and every, you know, many other places I don't remember. Um, but he, he uh, and, and to Dan Jr., you're on, uh, at home, I'll say this, I am deeply sad. He talked about you and your family a lot, but specifically you. And 
he, um, I'm, I'm sad for you that the list of activities that, and adventures you, you and your dad would have is not going to grow any longer. But you've got those experiences um, that you've had together to hang on to for the rest of your life. Little things I'm going to miss. Uh, when Dan would come down to visit me, he would um, he'd come into the lab. And, and before he got to my office, he always said the same thing. It was, is old man Christakos in? It was the, uh, the, the saying he would say before he'd pop into my office. Another thing I'm going to miss that's notably absent right now is when I come to work and uh, in the parking lot, his Subaru is not there with all the stickers on it and his bike. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, Dan was a lot of great things. And something I don't think he was was sentimental. He didn't really linger over good things or bad things, really. He just he did things. And he did things with people. Um, and I can't help but think that he really wouldn't like this event. It was, <laughs> it's formal, it's official, and it's not his thing. He would like a bike ride, and we are going to plan to do a Danny bike ride sometime in the spring. Um, thanks. Peter. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jonathan Fallon, um, the chief of orthopedics. So I worked with Dan for a very long time. And um, I wanted to get up and share some words with you, um, his friends, his community as well. So everybody's got their version of Dan, whether it's Big Danny slash Little Danny or Dr. McBride or just Dan. So I wanted to share with you sort of my version of what I knew of Dan McBride. So first impressions are a big thing. It's the first time you get to meet somebody. So I wanted to share with you my first impression of Dan McBride. I was a young pup, just finishing up my ortho residency, hadn't even started my fellowship, and I came up for an interview. And I'm sitting in the basement um, conference room of the old Hampshire Orthopedics, and I'm sitting in front of this big conference table, and there's Dr. Henry Drinker. So for those of you who don't know him, he was sort of the archetype of the surgeon. Proper tie, white coat, nice bushy mustache. Kind of a scowl of a face, but it, he was there. And John Curtis, who had sort of the einstein -y look with the bow tie, and he also had the white coat. And we're sitting around the table waiting and waiting to get started. And then into the room bust Dan McBride wearing full bike gear, straight off the road. Hi, I'm Dan McBride. That was my first impression of Dan McBride as he's sitting down to meet his future business partner, straight off the road, no pretense, just sits down and says, hi, I'm Dan McBride. So over the years, I've gained a lot more knowledge about Dan, uh, learned a lot more about him as, his, as a person. I've learned that he's a really good business partner. We went through a lot together going from Hamp Portho to part of Cooley Dickinson. We've grown the business, we've shrunk the business, we've grown the business together, and he was always a, a solid partner with me. He's a gifted surgeon. He was the real deal in the OR. Um, it was fun to talk with him back and forth about things that we were doing. He was always excited to hear about new things I was trying. It was always, always uh, in very open to inviting me in to watch what he was doing and share ideas, and it was, Always a pleasure to, to bounce um, orthopedics back and forth with him. And he was a fun biking partner, as, as Pete has, has really gone through some, some nice stories to really illustrate. He was just a great guy to be out in the road, out in the woods, just out about having a good time. But what has become most obvious in his absence over the last couple of weeks is that he was the ballast that stabilized our group. He was the thread that tied us all together. If there was a decision to make, if there was an issue that came up, Dan was there without ego, without pretense. He would give you his thoughtful opinion, and we would move on. Um, he was always willing to contribute what he thought was the best answer, not what was in his best interest, but just the right thing to do. 
Um, he was uninterested in appearances or accolades. He was just there to do his thing. And if you wanted to join in, great. If you didn't, that's great too. Have a great day. So to kind of circle back to my first story, um, that first encounter, while I may have learned a lot over the past couple of years, that first encounter really was the first impression that, that was the lasting impression and it really stands true. So, you know, every time I think of Dan, it's straight off the bike. Hi, how you doing? Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Michelle Helms. I am a general surgeon and vice president of the medical staff, and uh, I'm honored to speak about Dan. He was an amazing colleague and friend and a loving father and spouse, and most definitely a gifted and compassionate surgeon. Dan's patients and everyone around him recognized how much he cared, and this is reflected in their words. Because of him, I can walk without pain, a patient stated. Dan healed people with his surgical skill and meticulous technique. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome, another patient remarked. Another said, two hip replacements and all that entails. He not only is an excellent doctor, but a great person. I feel a hole in my heart, and there's a hole in his family and community I know. Every free step I take is for him. Dr. McBride attended to an 80-year-old who presented to the emergency room after a fall. He was an old 80 and had a lot of medical problems, and he was aware of the serious nature of his condition. He credits Dr. McBride with the full use of his knee and thus his mobility and independence. Dan was honored to operate on one of his best friends, also a Viking buddy, and he replaced this friend's hip. The friend was overjoyed and maybe a bit boastful when he declared, I know I'm fully healed because I beat Dan up a really big hill this weekend. When I asked Dan about it, he had a huge grin, like a Dan grin like this. And he said, well, I know I did a good job on that hip and high-fived me. And he was so proud. Dan recognized that surgery is a team sport and he valued his hospital, OR, and office teams and recognized all were important in taking the very best care of his patients. He cultivated a tight-knit, dedicated group in OR1. One colleague said he was never in a bad mood. When things weren't going the way he wanted them to, he kept his cool and figured it out. He would ask about their families and remember details about their lives they even sometimes forgot. I quote, Dan became a father figure after my dad passed away. I could count on him to listen and give the best advice he could. Dan loved his office team in Hatfield. One person remarked, he settled into the Hampshire orthopedics and sports medicine family and was a bright light to all who knew him. Always the one to give us nicknames that he deemed fitting to each of us. They would change on occasion, but he would remember each and every one. Beyond his skill, Dan healed people because he cared. And they recognized that. Patients appreciated the time he took to get to know them and understand their needs, and he listened. They commented on his ever-present smile, his energizer bunny attitude. He was generous with his time. He was easy to talk to, one commented. Patients mentioned running into him at the Y and on the trails. He would remember them and stop to catch up. And a quote, he would always have wonderful stories of adventures with his son. During the telling, he would have a sparkle in his eye and a smile on his face. Dan had a way of making everyone around him feel special. He had an open ear, a bright smile, and a big heart. One patient said plainly, he changed my life, and he has truly changed all of our lives. It is time that we take a stand and acknowledge grief for what it is, a natural and normal response to loss that is interwoven into a social cultural context. Grief is not an experience that needs to be silenced, treated, or pathologized. 
Grief and all the many complications it imposes on the griever is an experience that needs and deserves understanding, support, and community. So here are a few things to help and keep in mind in moving forward. Talk about Dr. McBride any time you feel his loss. Remember, even though time passes, it can feel like his death just happened moments ago. We are allowed our wide range of feelings. Think keys on the piano music we just heard. We are hurting and can share that with each other. Our relationships with one another can help heal us. Lastly, from Viktor Frankl, who was able to find joy, peace, purpose, and love in the midst of a Nazi death camp. We are responsible for performing well each day, and the only thing we can control is our response to events. He suggested that people seek to become psychologically and spiritually immune to toxicity, an instruction we can use well in these difficult times. So go from this place, not attempting to cast out your grief and loss, but rather rebuilding your lives around Dr. McBride's death and accepting its place in you. Amen. Thank you very much for coming, and um, we are very blessed to be together, and thank you for this time.